good introduction, Scott. I appreciate it. And uh, it's good to be here with, uh, with friends. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure throughout my career as a, uh, a looter, as, a, as an elected official, you know, both in the state legislature and in the, in the, uh, also the county board of commissioners, to be able to uh, help the Libertarian Party whenever I could. And uh, Scotty pointed out the one, uh, one of my proud accomplishments that I was very happy to work with the Libertarian Party on was that bill to make ballot access easier for third parties. And most of the time I spent in, in Lansing, I focused on trying to stop laws from passing. So there's very few that actually pushed for. And that was one of the ones that we did push for with the help of you know, Leonard Schwartz, Scott, a whole bunch of people in this room. We were able to get uh, that legislation uh, passed and signed into law. Um, and you, Scott, you mentioned that I've, I've, right now my full-time job is Michigan Taxpayers Alliance. Uh, a number of you in this room, uh, Carrie and a number of others, helped out our effort to recall Speaker Dillon, the Speaker of the Michigan House, after the, after the tax increases that Lansing passed a year and a half ago. And uh, as was alluded to, we were not successful in effort. Yet, at the same time, we were successful. Because we did a number of things. One thing, um, in the farewell addresses that outgoing lawmakers make at the end of every at the end of the six year term, the outgoing Democratic floor leader, uh, your state representative Steve Tabachman, now gone, uh, commented in his farewell speech, one of his regrets is what they had to spend over half a million dollars in Democratic Party money to try and fight the recall effort. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The other guy had that money, wouldn't it? Uh, half that, but then they, they spent over half a million dollars. And that doesn't include the money that Speaker Dillon personally raised. That's how much the Democratic Party raised. Speaker Dillon raised $122,000 to fight the recall for himself. So over $622,000 or $40,000. Mm -hmm. it, it was a pretty good showing. What really damaged the effort to actually get a recall was when we got caught up in a court battle. And we, in the uh, recall was scheduled for the August primary election date. And because of the court battles, got pushed to November. And we couldn't compete in November election because there was such an overwhelmingly high number of voters, our $40,000 gets spread way too thin. Uh, but we would have, I believe we would have been successful had we, the recall taken place in August when the focus was more on state and local issues before it became the focus on national issues. One other accomplishment that the Taxpayers Alliance had, along with uh, Libertarians and Friends of Liberty throughout Michigan, was we won those court battles. And the court battle that was most important was we won at the federal court level and was upheld with Circuit Court of Appeals, six Circuit Court of Appeals in Cincinnati, Cincinnati to get rid of the uh, petition laws that were specially created to protect office holders from petition circulators. For example, if you want to petition to put a politician in office, the rules are very lax. Anybody can be a petitioner. You don't have to be even a Michigan resident to be a petitioner. You don't have to live in a, in a certain district or a certain precinct to be a petitioner. And the certain petitions are only separated by county. But if you were wanted to recall that same politician, well, then the circular had to live in a specific area. The petitions had to be separated not just by county, but by the community within that county. And there's a whole bunch of set of other rules. Well, we went in court. Uh, now, uh, they, they, the court threw out those rules. The r rules for recall are now the same as they are for circulating petition get on the ballot. Right on. Well, that's a good we did, the Taxpayers Alliance and our members and, and, and the people that helped out did, was we didn't quit and didn't go away. Now, lawmakers, frankly, are used to hearing citizens threaten their political careers. But they recognize that citizens are not professionals, and they are. Politicians are professionals. So they know that the citizen who gets frustrated and stands up at a town hall meeting and says, well, I'm going to recall you, or I'm going to get you out of office. That citizen doesn't know how to really do that. They don't want their vote. They don't put a sign up in their yard. But they don't know the procedures, the processes. They don't have the legal lawyers to take it to court when they get screwed by the elections board that doesn't approve their language. Well, what I think surprised the political establishment in Lansing was the fact that we didn't go away. Of course, the local uh, boards of, uh, that they were supposed to approve our, our recall language rejected it. We knew that, but then we filed circuit court challenges, and we won them. When we lost those, we filed court challenges at, at, at the state court levels and won those. And then when they, won, when, they, when they threw out our signatures because of circulator technicalities, we went to the federal courts and won that. So they, the Lansing political establishment 
uh, is whistling past the graveyard now saying, whoa, that wasn't scary, that wasn't scary, because it, it is scary. Now citizens can circuit petitions far easier to recall somebody, and they've shown that they can get organized and go, women or court battles are necessary, and put the Speaker of the House on the ballot for a recall. That's not supposed to happen. Citizens are supposed to be too incompetent to get that done. Yeah, and, uh, you know, now, I think just stripping out those laws is a major accomplishment and showing we can go the distance. Didn't win the first battle, the first fight, but we went the distance. Sort of like Rocky Balboa in the first film. And we didn't win, but we went the distance. And uh, we show we can do that. You know, uh, Scott, you've given me a bit too long to speak here. And I told my friends at the table here that I would keep it short, but I know we've got a guest on his way, so you unfortunate people are going to have to hear me expound for a moment. <laughs> <laughs>